by request how to reuse your old 3D printer mainboard and LCD on your next Arduino project. If you've been around 3D printing for some time, there's a good chance you've amassed a lot of spares, and that includes 3D printer mainboards. Maybe you upgraded the mainboard, maybe you had a busted MOSFET. Either way, your old 8-bit mainboard is still entirely useful. A lot of people don't know this, but 8-bit 3D printer mainboards are built on Arduino and have a lot of similarities to an Uno or a Mega. In this video, we're going to look at setup and then go through a set of logical scenarios for input and output that someone might like on a typical Arduino project. The principles here should apply to almost any 8-bit 3D printer mainboard, but I'm going to focus on the Creality Melzi, as found in the CR10, Ender 3 and Ender 5. Make sure to head down and check out the video description. I'm going to have all of the resources I've used in this video linked, as well as some sketches I've set up to help you get started with your project. There's a lot to get through, so we'll be concise, starting with our foundation. This is an Arduino Mega, and at its heart is a microcontroller. Most of what the board does is expose all of the pins from the microcontroller in these handy sockets around the outside so we can connect our devices. It also has USB connectivity and voltage converters for supplying external power. These connectors on the outside aren't that versatile, so we might plug in something like a shield that gives us a place to solder on dedicated components. There are specific types of shields, such as this LCD and button combo, and this motor shield, which is necessary for powering high current devices. It can take two stepper motors, four DC motors, or three servos. As you might have guessed, 3D printers have their own specific shields. This example here being the ramps, with five stepper motor outputs, three MOSFETs, spare input output pins, and twin ribbon cables running to an LCD encoder and buzzer. A mega and ramp setup ended up evolving into something like an MKS Gen L, which is pin compatible except in an all-in-one board. It still has all of the same inputs and outputs. Our Creality Melzi is similar to this. The microcontroller is not quite as good, and it only has four stepper motor outputs, but three MOSFETs for high current, still a bunch of input output pins, and a single ribbon cable connector to an LCD with encoder, button, and buzzer. Essentially, our Melzi board is the equivalent of an Arduino board, a motor shield, and an LCD shield, so I hope you agree it's still quite useful. The microcontroller in our Creality Melzi isn't supported by Arduino by default, so we have a quick bit of setup to do. Sanguino is not supported by default in Arduino, but all you need to do is follow this link in the description, come down to the README, copy the line that ends in .json, and then back in Arduino, come to File, Preferences, and paste it in in the large spot down the bottom. We can now hit OK to save, come up to Tools, Board, Boards Manager, and when we start typing in Sanguino, it will be sitting here waiting for us. I've already installed mine, so it's grayed out, but you'll have an Install button to click here. Once this is done successfully, when you come down to Tools and then Board, You'll notice down the bottom, there's a Sanguino option. And from here, the processor we should use is the ATmega 1284 or ATmega 1284P 16 MHz. If you're using a ramps compatible board, everything will be set up already. You just set your board to an Arduino Mega or Mega 2560. You'll recall that on a standard Arduino board that all of our input and output pins are numbered around the outside. We don't have that, but we can still make a handy reference. To retrieve the pins for this board, I've come to the Marlin GitHub, and I've gone into Source, Pins, Sanguino, Pins, Melzi Creality. It's got all of the pin definitions for our main board, but the handiest bit is at the bottom, this large commented out section. We're going to copy all of this, come back to our sketch, in the upper right hand corner, select New Tab. I recommend typing in Pins for the name, and then we're going to paste what we just copied from the GitHub. We now have a handy reference we can flick to at any time if we want to use a particular pin and we need to look up what to refer to it as in Arduino. For instance, the heated bed pin is pin 12. If we need even more detail, linked in the description is this data sheet. And this document can be handy for finding specific functions. For instance, we can see here that this is interrupt pin 0 and we can see that that's PD2. Back in our pins, we can see that we have port, 
D2, and that tells us that Arduino references this as pin 10. If you're using a ramps or ramps based board, a quick Google image search reveals that we can easily get a diagram labeling all of the pins. For these boards, almost everything is included. And for anything missing, such as the stepper motor driver pins, we can once again come to the pin ramps file on Marlin and have these all listed here. A boot later makes it possible to upload code from the Arduino IDE via USB cable. If you're using a ramp space board, you can skip this step. Unfortunately, the Creality board doesn't come with one, but I do have a guide on how to add it. When this is done, to upload your sketches, you'll simply plug in your computer via the USB cable to the board. We're finally onto the main event. Let's upload our first sketch. The hello world of Arduino is the Blink sketch, and we can get to that from File, Examples, Basics, Blink. Since I've got my pin reference set up here, I'm going to copy the content I need from this example sketch over to my original one. So I've copied over the relevant code, but you can see there's a variable here called LED built in. Our board doesn't use that, so instead I'm going to declare one manually. I've decided for this example to plug it into the Z-stop pin. Ground is on the left and our actual pin on the right. And if I switch to my reference, I can scroll down and find the relevant pin number. We found it down the bottom, Z stop, and the pin we need to call it is 20. Now I just substitute in LED instead of the variable that was already in place. That's our sketch complete. I've plugged in an LED to pin 20. We tell Arduino that pin is an output, and then we turn it on and off at an interval of one second. Assuming we have the correct board selected, as well as a port, we can click upload. A humble beginning, but it does show that we can use a 3D printer main board instead of a dedicated Arduino board. It's just a matter of looking up our pin reference and typing it in accordingly. One of the best tools for debugging is to use the serial connection. It's inbuilt into Arduino, so all we need is one line in the setup, and then an output line at a strategic place in the code. I'm now going to re-upload this. And now that the sketch is running, I'm going to come to Tools, Serial Monitor, and every two seconds or so, we should have this message output. Let's quickly cover having a button input. For this example, I've connected up a simple momentary switch, and I've plugged it into the hot end for Mr. Plug. In our pins, this is called temp0 pin, and we can see that it's referred to as pin 24. Here is a very simple bit of code to get this working. I declare my button as pin 24. I start the serial port. I declare the button as an input pull up, and that prevents a floating state. And then inside my loop, if a button press is detected, it'll output button to serial, otherwise nothing, and then a small delay. We open up the serial monitor, press the button, and we can see that it's working as desired. If you want to reliably detect a single button press, we need to do it differently. And for this, we're going to use our first library. Libraries are installed by coming to Sketch, Include Library, Manage Libraries. The library we're looking for is called Bounce2. I've already installed it, but if you haven't, you can click the Install button here. After that, if we come to File, Examples, and then scroll down until we get to our custom library section, we can see there's a range of inbuilt sketches to help us learn how this works. With this as reference, I'll now copy over the relevant code. I've copied over everything I need, including the library, starting the instance of dbouncer, attaching it to the button, setting the interval parameter, and then in my loop, updating the status and reading from the button. Dbouncing like this makes button presses reliable by removing false positives. Let's keep moving with PWM outputs, specifically using the MOSFETs. Our Creality board has multiple PWM outputs, but there's three that we care about that are connected to the MOSFETs, and that's the heated bed, the hot end, and the part cooling fan. If we refer to our pins reference, we can see that the heated bed pin is pin 12, the hot end heater pin is pin 13, and the part cooling fan pin is pin 4. The beauty of these PWM outputs is we can vary the output voltage. Here I'm going to run a 12 volt blower fan, which draws less than one amp, so I can run it directly from the MOSFET. If you were driving a really high current device, you could use an external MOSFET, such as this one from TH3D, 
or you could use a quality solid state relay to control something mains powered. I've plugged in this blower directly into the heated bed pins, positive on the left, ground on the right. Anytime you're using these MOSFET outputs, it's important to connect an external power supply of 12 or 24 volts. And here's my very simple sketch. I nominate my pin as 12, which is for the heated bed. I tell it this pin is an output, and then I vary the output voltage via PWM to the fan at around 40% for two seconds, full power for two seconds, and then I turn it off for three seconds. We've got four outputs for stepper motors, so let's learn how to use them. When running a stepper motor, we need our external 12 or 24 volt power supply connected. And then we have an option of four stepper motor drivers. And for this example, I randomly plug mine into Z. There's a few available, but the library we're using for this is called Speedy Stepper. One thing I like about it is the extremely good documentation that explains everything and then runs through all of the options we have available to turn our stepper motors. And here's my simple proof of concept using this library. And this is building on one of the examples provided by the library, but adding some things to get it to work with this board. We're plugged into the Z axis, so we need three pins. We can see pin two is Z direction, pin three is Z step, and down the bottom, pin 26 is Z enable. We declare these at the top. However, I had to add motor enable myself, as this board has an enable pin that unless pulled to ground, will not activate the stepper motor. This library is set up to run stepper motors in full steps, but the drivers in our Melzi board are configured for one to the 16 micro stepping. Therefore, any movement values, you should add time 16 to make them accurate. Even so, the speed and acceleration that come with the base sketch are very conservative and I've upped them a fair amount. In the loop, we turn 200 steps or one full rotation, wait one second, and then do the same thing in reverse. Our simple sketch works beautifully, but if you want to do something more complicated, there's a fair chance the library supports it. For instance, turning a stepper motor until a button press is detected is covered in the documentation. The next one is quite straightforward, and that's controlling servos. Arduino has a servo library built in, and this is a slightly modified version of the sweep example sketch. A servo needs a PWM pin to drive it, and the one I've chosen is 27. That's previously used for the beeper, or if you're running a BL Touch with a pin 27 board, it's used for that instead. This sketch is really straightforward. We create a servo, we tell it which pin to attach to, and then we get it to rotate back and forth during the loop. Usually a servo needs five volts, ground, and then signal. I had to change the connector to separate the signal from the ground and five volts, so I could plug in directly to this board. All of what we need is in the connector for the ribbon cable. The bottom right is five volts, the bottom left is ground, and the top left is pin 27 that we're using for our servo. The sketch runs as we would hope, except I did feel sorry for this servo because it seemed to mimic some sort of creature struggling on the ground. The second last item is the EEPROM and it's the easiest one on this list. The EEPROM can be used like a hard drive to save values that remain even after a power cycle. Arduino has an EEPROM library included without anything extra needing to be installed from the library manager. There are more commands than this, but for most operations, you're only going to need two. For either of these commands, we're going to need an address. I've used one here, the lowest you can have is zero, and the EEPROM on this particular board is four kilobytes, so it's unlikely you're going to run out of storage. To read the value, we simply use EEPROM.read with our address, and then when we want to save, we use EEPROM.update, and the two arguments are the address, and then the value we want to write. It's better to use update rather than write because it only writes to the EEPROM if the value already saved there is different. Our last item is the most complicated but by far the most powerful and it's reusing the factory LCD and encoder from the Melzi board. The library we're using is the U8 graphic library and this is the same one used by the Marlin firmware. On their GitHub there's a lot of tutorials as well as a really detailed user reference page it can be a bit overwhelming, but if you work your way through the example slowly, you should be able to pick things up as you need them. A good sketch to start out on is the inbuilt graphics test. It only needs a single line of configuration, and it's buried in this wall of text here. 
These are all the various screens that this library supports and all we have to do is uncomment L1 and specify the correct pins. Our screen is an ST7920 and it uses three pins SBI communication. In our pins file, we can see that the LCD pins are 17, 28 and 30. The order they need to be entered is 30, 17 and 28. When we upload this to the board, we get a pretty cool display on our LCD and it tells us that everything's okay and we can probe a little further. When you're creating your own content, a good sketch to start with is the Hello World one and I've copied and pasted some code into this sketch here. In the loop we have a function that controls the timing of the drawing and then we have a separate draw function where we can use simple commands such as draw string to put text on the screen. The three arguments are the horizontal position, the vertical position and then the text. Not much to say here apart from the fact that it worked. Let's continue. Let's say we want to use the encoder wheel and click knob to interact with our screen. To do that I'm using the encoder step counter library and this is the interrupt example sketch. All I've done is substitute in the two pins for my encoder and we can find those under button encoder 2 and button encoder 1. If we upload that sketch and open the serial port monitor we'll see that turning the encoder either way updates the value. So now for the final step. I've combined what we just had for the LCD library, the encoder library as well as the bounce library from earlier on. The encoder click wheel is pin 16 and if you want to use the beeper that's pin 27. The output of this sketch is pretty straightforward. It prints the text encoder is, saves the encoder position to a buffer and then outputs that as a text string and if it detects that we're holding the button it draws a frame around the entire screen. The uploaded sketch works exactly as we would like and you can really start to see the potential of this system. A good example might be using the encoder to set the power for something and the click wheel to turn it on and off. On these beginner principles we can build and build, slowly adding complexity until we have something that actually functions quite well. This is a preview of an open source device that I'll be featuring in a future video. We have a power setting that's stored to the EEPROM and then a timer that can change dynamically as we turn the click wheel. When the timer is running it activates a turntable controlled by a stepper motor as well as other hardware with the MOSFETs. Hopefully the principles in this video will help you recycle your old 3D printer mainboard into your next Arduino project. Now when it comes to Arduino I am self-taught so my code could probably do with a lot of optimization. If you've got any suggestions for that or other uses for reusing your old 3D printer mainboard please leave them down below in the comments section. Thank you so much for watching and until next time happy Arduino project. G'day it's Michael again. If you like the video then please click like. If you want to see more content like this in future click subscribe and make sure you click on the bell to receive every notification. If you really want to support the channel and see exclusive content become a patron. Visit my Patreon page. See you next time.